Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, now that we've drawn out the basic structure of our edge loops here for the face, now it's time to begin pulling it out into three dimensions. So, as you can see here, if I hit the Z key to go to solid view, we've got the basic structure down. What I'd like to do now is just begin pulling them out into three dimensions from the side view. We've created the edge loops from the front view, now let's go to the side view to begin pulling them out. So what I'm going to do is begin going right down the center here, and I'm going to begin dragging each point out so it matches up with the reference drawing. So I'll pull that out to here. I'm going to hit the Z key to go to wireframe. And then now I'm going to select the point right below this, and then drag this out and then the point below this and drag this out and it's a little bit tedious yes i'll agree however i think it's a good process just to make sure you get everything in the proper place now it looks like my reference drawing is a little bit off here so there are a couple things i can do here um, i think maybe i'll press the n key and bring up the properties panel and scroll all the way down here and this is the right view, so I'll open up that panel. And here in the Y, let's see what we can do. If I bring this up, that's the wrong way. Let's bring it down. So it looks like maybe 4.95 might be the way to go. Here, let's try this. Yeah, something like that. It looks like that's a little bit better aligned. And this is just a reference for help here. It's not, it doesn't have to be exact, but it does help just to get it a little bit more in line. So now, see if I pull this out and I'll pull this one out. Yeah, so it's still a little bit off, but I'm willing to work with it here. And even though I really tried to get these the exact same size in Photoshop, they're still a little bit off here, and that's okay. All right, so now that I have the basic outline of this center line down, I'll move to the next row to the right and just begin pulling these out. Now, these I won't pull out all the way. I'll pull out just not quite to the ones I've already created. And I'm trying to imagine how these points um, will lay down in the final three-dimensional object here. So trying to get a sense of how they just kind of curve around the chin here. These do not have to be in the exact place at this point in time. We're just getting them in the general location here. All right, so I'll move to the next row here and start pulling these out as well. And we can also move this over here so we can kind of see the side view here. And this one looks like it should go at the mouth like that. All right, so little by little we're getting there. Let me bring this one forward. And there's this one here. And this one, okay, so now we're We've got that edge loop around the eye right here. Now let's see what else we need to bring forward here. Looks like we've got all of these and it looks like we need to begin bringing these in. I'm gonna go right at the edge of the mouth now so these two can come forward to the edge of the mouth. And yes, the drawing is a little off, but that's okay. All right, so now I'll begin working on these points coming off of the mouth here, like this. And I'm going to come around the mouth, right? So we've got that. Now I'll do the next edge loop, come around the mouth. So this one needs to be pulled forward. So does this one here. And this one, okay, so I missed that one. There we go, that helps. Okay, so that's that edge loop there. So I got a little ahead of myself. There we go. All right.
Right, so now we've got those points pulled out into three dimensions. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. It's going to be kind of scary, I'll tell you now. I'll go back to the default view, and there it is. And it is definitely kind of scary. <laughs> but you can see now that we've got the basic structure here. So let me go to face mode and I'll alt click one of these edges between two faces and you can see how that loop goes around the mouth. Same way up here around the nose, right? You can see how that loop comes around. Same thing over the bridge of the nose and the same thing around the eyes. So the structure is here. Now all we need to do is just begin adjusting it so it actually begins to look a little bit more like the character. Now to help us get a little bit better shape on this, let's do a couple things. Let's bring in our reference images over here. So we've got this outliner window. We can switch to a UV image editor. I'll also click on this little tab and drag out a new window. And now for these two windows, let's switch them to UV image editors. And I already have my front view here. Let's open this up and get our side view in here as well. There we go. So we've got our side view here. So we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better. In addition, let's come back to our modifiers panel here, and we already have a mirror modifier. Let's go ahead and add another one, a subdivision surface modifier, that will help smooth this out a little bit and give us a more cartoony effect. So I'll click Add Modifier, Subdivision Surface, and there we go. We can also come over here to the Tools tab, and when we tab into object mode, we can click the smooth shading button and that will help smooth it out a bit. I'll come down here and with the views, I'll click that to increase it to two. And now you can see that we've got kind of a smoother version of the character here. Now if I tab back into edit mode, we've still got the unsmoothed wire cage here. We can turn that off, or we can make the edit cage match the modifier result by clicking this button here. And now the edges and vertices will kind of match the smoothed version. So here's where we can begin pulling points around, trying to get it to look a little bit more like the character that we're after. Now we can always then come back here and like press the three key and the five key on the numpad and see it in both the side or if I hit the one key, the front. And we can begin adjusting things here so it looks a little bit more like the character. So I can begin pulling these out some. And it just takes a bit of point pulling and moving things around until you get it the way that you like it. Now I'm going to go to the front view here and see how the mouth is doing. The mouth is actually not too bad from the front view, and I think that's the default view I'm going to go with. From the side view, it looks a little off, but I think I may just adjust the reference image again. Usually you just want to go with one if they're a little off. And also in the front view, I'm going to begin moving these around to try and match the shape of the head, something like this, just to get it a little bit better there. Now I'll tumble back around, hit the Z key, and we're beginning to get something like this. So what I'll be doing then between now and the next video is I'll be coming in here and just beginning to move some points around, trying to get this to look a little bit more like the character. One of the things I will be trying to do is if you notice here, you can see that, let me hit alt click there, you can see how angular this edge is. And what it really needs to be is more rounded. We need to begin pulling these forward some so that we get more of a rounded forehead and also the mouth here. Oftentimes the mouth, as you can see, gets this very angular shape and we need to begin bringing these forward and rounding off the face. So I'll be doing that as well. I'll be going through and trying to 
get a more rounded shape to the character here. But I think he's coming along. In the next video, what we'll be doing is we'll be extruding up over the forehead and then down along the back of the neck. So that's coming up. I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode, and as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles Render Engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.